We are here at the Magic Kingdom and it is Tron Preview Day. I am so excited. Can't wait to go ride this. We've been watching these construction updates for the last five years and now it is time to ride Tron. Let's go. Member preview where you have to have a wristband on your wrist to go on a truck. One hour later. Yeah. Thanks so much. Prepare to be digitized into the world of Tron. Did you have fun? can see I just rode Tron light cycle run last night at the Magic Kingdom and it was awesome. A little short but awesome. 
So let's get into everything you need to know about Tron. Here we go. All right, so first let's just talk about what is Tron. Tron Light Cycle Power Run, which is the official name, uh, is a semi-enclosed steel launched roller coaster. It does already exist. It's over in Shanghai, Disneyland. Uh, now it is here at the Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida. Uh, it is based obviously on the movie franchise Tron and the attraction takes guests through a ride on the grid on their very own light cycle. It uh, obviously is in Tomorrowland. It technically opens on April 4th, but it soft opened on February 3rd, just a few days ago. I got to ride on February 6th. Big thanks to my buddy, JT. I don't know if he wants me to use his full name or not, but for hooking me up and taking me along for the run. Uh, it was made by Vacoma, but uh, in collaboration with Walt Disney Imagineering. Uh, it has been in the works for quite a while now, um, but anyway, just going through more of the stats, uh, it is an LIM launch, so it's got that magnetic launch system, which is really cool to kind of like shoot you right out. You go right into the action. You get that, that moment right away. You only go as high as about 78 feet, just over 78 feet, so not super tall. There are no inversions. You never go upside down. Uh, you do go around 60 miles an hour. I think it's 59 point some, 59.3. Uh, so you're going about 60 miles an hour. Some places list this as the new list this as the new fastest roller coaster. Although when you go on rock and roller coaster, they say you're going to go 60, but it does feel like you're doing. It is a very similar um, ride and concept in a lot of ways to rock and roller coaster. Although there are like new technology features like you would see in Guardians, but we'll get into all that in a little bit. But just hitting on rock and roller coaster, it's a quick launch out of the gate, just like Tron and, and rock and roller coaster. This one does take you outside through the, around the bubble first, as you saw in the video, and then inside. The inside is a lot like Rock and Roller Coaster, except you're not gonna go upside down, but there are large displays that kind of light up as you go through them. It does feel a little Guardians-esque in that respect once you're inside, because there's large displays on walls. Sometimes you're just going through these touch points or you know whatever they want to call them on this ride. But it, it, it does feel like that. But it, in lengthwise, Rock and Roller Coaster is very, you know, not the longest ride, and this is not the longest either. They say on the website this is around a two minute experience, but from the time that you're on the coaster and moving and you hit from the launch until you pull into the tunnel to wait to deboard is only just over a minute. I think it's like 60 to 65 seconds, depending on how you want to time it. And then you have to kind of wait in the tunnel, you come, you, you, you deboard and whatnot. So not the longest attraction in the world, especially if you're waiting a long time. I know a lot of people earlier, uh, yesterday in the day, during the day, we're moving through the line a lot faster. Some people rode up to eight times. Once you got the wristband, so yesterday when we went, we got the Tron wristbands, you basically can go as many times as you want. Once you were through the check-in with these, you could just keep riding. We went at night, and we, I think, probably waited the longest out of anyone for the day, but I think everyone wanted to go once it got dark, because we got in line just after sunset, and it was beautiful. Going through that bubble and the grid, uh, the entire pavilion is gorgeous. It, it's gonna be a new spot for me just to hang out. It is interesting the way the line's going to work, that if it's a very long line like it was for us, we waited two hours and 10 minutes for you know this 60 second attraction. But uh, although the queue is very cool, uh, I really like how they set it all up. But outside anyway, just for, if there is going to be a long line like for us, you wait under the bubble for a while, a while, but then you go out and you're out exposed to the elements for a large stretch. Then they have some umbrellas for shade and protection from the rain. We'll see how that works out. Hopefully they can move that line inside with the use of virtual queue and uh they do have a lot of switchbacks inside and a lot of rooms but it does have a big put through i mean this ride is over they can do uh 1680 riders an hour they have seven trains with seven cars rows are two by two another thing with this is that since you're getting in to the ride in a kneeling position you it, it is a little awkward to get on for the first time and i can see some guests having a hard time getting on or off there are two different loading areas on either side of the load um, platforms so there's one to the left and right of the ramp you come down uh you do walk around your car and get on the other side so you're not getting in on both ways and you don't climb over both to get in you walk around and behind what i would recommend everyone do is that this is going to be a ride and we talked about this in line last night i wish there weren't design rides that left people out if you are a very tall person or a larger person, this is gonna be a ride that's questionable for you. I recommend everyone, no matter what, go try just to get comfortable with it too. There's the two test seats outside, um, right before you go into the building uh, with the main queue. Go check, check out those two light cycles and make sure you can fit in them and make sure you can get on and off very easily. We had someone with us even who, you know, she was fine physically, like, you know, she, she wasn't too tall, she wasn't, she wasn't a large person, she was in her center, but she had a knee issue but you have to get in into a kneel position and then pull this thing down and have the, you know, your back piece come over the back of you. There is on some of the trains, not all of the trains, 
but some of them have a back row where you can just sit in a normal seat. So if you are a very tall person, you can't get into a kneeling position, uh, or you're a larger person, they do have that car available. And talk to a cast member about that before or as early as you can, as soon as you get in line, just to make sure even that is gonna be okay and how long that wait will be. So talking about the history of Tron, uh, like I said, this first debuted over in Shanghai uh, in June of 2016. And we were supposed to get kind of a copy of it here, but obviously they had to modify it a little bit. Obviously the train had to go underneath the platform. The train was gone for four years, or I should say the railroad. Uh, but the Magic Kingdom was first announced uh, at the D23 Expo in July of 2017. And we knew about it a little bit before that. There was rumors and things leaked. So like we've kind of known about it now for five years uh, because we started finding out in like the February timeframe of 2017 that there was going to be this new coaster at the Magic Kingdom. Uh, there was, you know, reports that it may be Tron. So we've kind of known for five years, we've been waiting and it was supposed to open as part of the 50th anniversary. But because of the pandemic and everything going on, uh, it got pushed back and then they announced finally, okay, we'll do spring of 2023. And then here we are. Uh, they said it was gonna be part of a hundred years of wonder, but really it's, there's always an occasion. Are you right? It's not the 50th anniversary, the hundred years of wonder. Magic Kingdom has its own anniversaries. Who knows? This is opening to the public, like I said, on April 4th of this year. It will have a virtual queue. Um, right now they're doing cast member previews. That's how I got to go. Again, big, big thanks to uh, my buddy JT uh, for taking me. Well, if you are a cast member, you were allowed to go and take up to three guests. And they didn't have to be cast members. So that's why you, you see a lot of us um, vloggers, bloggers, people who have YouTube channels going uh, already because we were lucky enough to know a really awesome, super cool cast member in our lives. So, and also if any cast members out there are watching and ever want to take me along to anything, I'll come with you. <laughs> so what I, we're guessing is uh, this first month will be cast member previews, then we'll probably do a month of annual pass holder previews. And then April 4th will be open to the public with those virtual queues. There will be lightning lanes available and I'm sure those will go crazy. But now let's walk through the experience when you get to Trot. So as I mentioned just a little bit ago, when you get to the attraction, it is grand, it's beautiful. You go up this walkway, they have the big Tron sign, everyone taking pictures. And then you kind of make your way into under the bubble. As I just said, we got there just after sunset, so the lights were on. Super cool, changing from, you know, the orange colors and the blues. When you get on the ride, you are team blue. Rocking the team blue today. Uh, by the way, get, get your merch. So when you go underneath the, the canopy, the music is great. I love the music loop, it's super cool. You are underneath the wonder and kind of the spectacle of the ride and that first initial launch where those coasters are coming out over and over again, right above your head, going over you, kind of building that anticipation. There is a restroom off to the side. I would highly recommend going to that restroom before you get on because it is, uh, very misleading how long the queue is inside. You think once you get inside, you're good to go. Nay, nay, you uh, have about four or five rooms you gotta go through and a few switchbacks before you get even close to seeing where you're about to get on the ride. So make sure you use that restroom. Again, I, if you miss my bath, my bathroom tips, my restroom tips. New restrooms are the best. The water pressure is always good. They keep them super clean. Uh, also ladies, you may not wanna wear low cut shirts. Uh, we saw a little bit of that last night. You are being bent over uh, with your chest facing down just a little word to the wise, if you, you know, if you're doing just to prep you, I don't know. But anyway, once you go in, uh, the very first indoor enclosure is that lit, um, it looks like a tunnel system uh, with the different music going off and the, the lighting effects every few seconds. Uh, that's your first area where there's about five rows of switchbacks. This will be great for the summer. They have three gigantic fans, which really generate a lot of wind and a lot of air movement. But last night was a little chilly. Uh, I was in a cutoff. I was getting a little cold and I never get cold. Uh, the people I was with were in jackets and long sleeves and even they were getting a little chilly. So I would say you may wanna be ready for those fans to be going. Even if you're coming in off the rain on a hot summer day, uh, it could make you a little chilly just because it generates a lot of air movement. I think I'm gonna love it on those days that are 80 plus, but if it's below 80 or if you're coming in from some rain, you could be a little chilly, that's all I'm saying. From there, you go inside, you know, a few different rooms. You have this like, what looks like a, like a circuit board, a wall, the room that you go in. The, the next big room is super cool. It's that reveal room. Uh, well, also we should talk about lockers. Let's talk about lockers. Lockers are about halfway through the indoor uh, area of the queue. You don't have to use the lockers. The lockers are for if you have book bags, large water bottles. If you have things in your pockets only, there is a compartment on the light cycle where you can put things in your pocket in there or not even take them out if they're tucked in tight enough. But you are bent over, kind of hunched, and if you have loose items or big pockets, things will fall out. You are gonna be turning left and right on some big bank turns and your knees and legs are gonna be bent. So your pockets or things in your pockets may be pushed to the top of your pockets. 
So they have a little compartment for pocket stuff. But if you have bags, you can't wear a backpack on this and there's nowhere to put it on the ground like other roller coasters. And if you have a water bottle, there's nowhere to put the water bottle. So you gotta use the lockers. They are free. You could use your um, ticket um, for the day or your magic band. You go on, you put your stuff in on one side and then you, when you leave the ride on the other side of that locker, you're pulling it out the other direction. So you kind of put it in here and you're gonna be pulling it out this direction. It was a bit chaotic. So I would recommend if you have someone who's not riding and, and I, I'm sad to say this, but I think every group is gonna have at least, because again, it might be more higher than a one out of 10, but there's gonna be at least 10 to 15% of people who can't ride this. We had somebody who just looked at it and was like, I don't think it's for me. So he held all of our stuff. So we didn't have to stop at lockers. And that's a nice place to just pass the whole line because everyone's fidgeting with the lockers. They weren't working the best. Um, a lot of people reported on that too, that, that they were having some troubles with the lockers. So try to skip them if you can. But if you've got a backpack or a bag or a water bottle, have your ticket ready. You go up to the ones they send you to. Make sure you remember that locker number and make sure you take your Magic Bander key with you. Literally the group in front of us put all their stuff in the locker, including the key they had, but they put it in the locker and closed the door and then they panicked because they, they were like, now how are we gonna open it? And the cast member said, don't worry, somebody on the other side will help you get your stuff out. As long as you remember the locker number and you can describe what's inside the locker, they'll open it up for you. But yeah, so now you know lockers. Another thing, so we then we get on the ride, that, that cool uh, window screen review, uh, reveal, not review, <laughs> really, really. that cool uh, big uh, window, onto the, uh, I guess, where you first see the coasters in action. That reveal is super neat. Then you go in, you go through all the rooms. The rooms are great. They kind of explain the ride, the theming, why you're there, what a light cycle run is, what you're doing on the ride and the attraction. And then, uh, yeah, then you pretty much, you know, you're going down the ramps, you get on the ride. Leaving, I will say, there were a lot of code Vs. Uh, let's just say a lot of people uh, might have had an upset stomach leaving this ride. I don't know if people just weren't used to it. This is the most I've ever seen on anything, including Guardian. I'm very lucky where I don't get motion sickness, but I guess a lot of people did here. We, in the time that we left, our, uh, there was one member of our party that, that left right before we got on the coaster. Like literally we were getting on the coaster, they went through. So they only had to wait maybe two to three minutes because the ride's only 60 seconds for us to come out and then go through the locker area. And through that exit and locker area, apparently there was three spills just in the, the three to four minutes, we were not with him. Uh, and we saw one of them fresh and they were cleaning up two other areas that looked like he had just finished cleaning them. So, I, you know, if you have a weak stomach, you might want to have someone who knows you or a family or friend uh, or someone you trust to have gone on it to really figure out if you can do it. Uh, again, for me, it doesn't go upside down. Uh, there are bank turns. I think what could be a little offsetting is you are bent over when you're doing it. And inside, there are things that light up or you could be a little disoriented. There's, you know, they also use the use of screens when you're going around like a bank turn it looks like you're racing another car that could freak some people out i'm not sure again uh it's not something that happens to me but if you have a very weak stomach you may want to skip this one or, or talk to somebody or a cast member or someone you trust like i said in your family or a uh, group of friends to see if you'll be able to handle it or take a thumbs or drama mean whatever you gotta do anyway a new exit i love the exit area i think it's the coolest part of the whole thing you come out, you're still underneath the bubble. The coaster comes right alongside you. It feels like you can reach out and touch them, and they are flying at that point. Uh, the music loop is great. The restrooms are clean. It's going to be protected from the sun. It's going to be protected from the rain, so I think people might just want to hang out here. And it's, it's a great addition. So overall, what do I think? I wish more people could go on it. I hate that it's going to single out people. I think for the first few weeks this ride is open, maybe the first few months, maybe the first year, they're going to have a lot of trouble people get, getting people on and off. The lockers are going to give people problems uh, getting onto this thing. So many people, even these are cast members and we were told a million times, but the fact that you have to walk around if you're on the one side instead of crawl over, getting on is very slow. You have to pull the thing down yourself, making sure your pockets are emptied uh, or put away. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see, but I'm all about more everything, more anything. This is gonna pull people. We obviously, we just lost Splash Mountain, which is gonna kill our uh, ride times all, everywhere else throughout the park. That ate a lot of people. I think this is gonna do a great job of starting April 4th of eating large crowds and just pushing everyone in that direction. There is gonna be a virtual queue. I'm not sure if there'll be standby as well or if there'll be some mix uh, or how many people they'll let sit in the queue once you're cold for your virtual queue and then sit in the actual standby line. But it's, it's super cool. It's a beautiful addition at night. Uh, I think everyone should go check it out. Uh, once it gets a little dark, go up, walk it around. Once it's open on April 4th, but go walk that whole area, listen to the music, watch the trains go by, get, take a little sit down. I wish there were more benches uh, or places to sit. There are people just kind of just like hanging out along the rails. 
But yes, so that's it. Tron light cycle run here at the Magic Kingdom. It's awesome. I hope I get to go again. If anyone else there is another cast member who's going again and has an open spot, come take me. I would love to go again. And uh, we'll have some drinks or something. Who knows? Maybe grab a bucket of popcorn at the Magic Kingdom and split that. And I'm going to try and go for the annual pass holder previews as well. And I will see you at the Magic Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me a big favor, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and come hang out with us on our Discord. You can follow all my socials on the Discord all down below in the description. Thank you. I love you. And I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. And there's only one way to wrap it up. And now it's time to pay the price. <laughs> hey. See you later. Yeah.